Hello guys, I just got the PCBs for the controller and for the little uh, Arduino Pro Mini Shield that should hopefully make building Darcy tractors a little bit quicker. So in this video I'm just going to open them up and show you what the PCBs look like. So this will just be a quick video, I'm just going to uh, open the PCBs up and uh, show you what, or what they look like. In, uh, in a follow up video I'll be assembling the PCBs, I want to do that in its own separate video uh, kind of like instructions on how to assemble them and um, I'll probably do another video after that where I take a look at uh, the different functions that I've wrote for the, the software for these things because um, I've wrote a library uh, which is kind of a combination of a lot of different libraries and with any luck uh, I'll get that uh, working with this new controller pretty quickly I, I'll just have to some of the pins have changed since the old design so I'll just have to um, the, sort that out in the code but uh, that shouldn't be too too difficult so here's the first board anyway this is the main control board for the for the controller itself so all the circuitry is on this board and in addition to this board I have two kind of uh, cover kind of panel boards that uh, uh, will kind of protect the user so that you're not touching the wires at the back and also the uh, problem I had with the first board was all the exposed contacts on the back here they, you know, they would catch your clothing so if you had the board on your lap it would catch, catch your clothing and uh, you didn't want that so I've made some or well I've had some back panels made so these will just go on the back of the main PCB and that will also give it a kind of a 3D feel so it's a bit more comfortable in the hand and then obviously some front panels with, uh, with guides and um, labels on the on the switches yeah, like you've seen with the back panel it's, it's one PCB flipped over so uh, you kind of manufacturing twice as many of those which makes the, each individual one a little bit cheaper and I've also done the same here so we have a front panel that looks like that that way and that that way so they'll be up off the PCB as well so you should have a good kind of three dimensional shape that's about the right thickness for an RC controller and as well as that you see it's a little bit smaller than the old design was this is the version 1 PCB and here's the new one so there was a lot of wasted space on the old one because I was just trying to get it ready so that I could use it in the model show I wanted a kind of a a, a working controller but this second one uh, the space is used much better like the we have the two joysticks around about there then we have two encoders one on each side uh, three buttons there so you can get your joysticks and then straight to the buttons no problem we have the buttons to control the LCD screen they're there and then quick selects for the vehicles there at the back here because you don't want to be accidentally pushing those buttons so you have to move away from your controls here to select a different vehicle that's um, that's the idea anyway hopefully that'll work out so this is the new PCB uh, zoomed in as far as I can with this is again uh, there's not much change just normal switches there push button switches normal joystick uh, the encoders to go here uh, they're a little bit different um, I, I think I mentioned before in a different video that uh, the sliding pots while they looked good and they, they worked pretty good the problem was that um, because they always or well because they didn't return to zero if you flick from a tractor after adjusting the link arm height for example the and then you switch from that tractor that you had maybe put the potentiometer up to the maximum and then you switch to the Hitachi or some other type of excavator that used the potentiometer for its tracks the, the excavator would just start driving out of control so uh, instead of that I'm using these encoders so each vehicle will have its own 
value for the encoder so they'll all start at zero or whatever you left them at so uh, the other benefit of that is when you switch between tractors the lifting arms aren't automatically jumping up and down um, between the different tractors so say you had one tractor pulling a trailer and then you had another tractor with the lifting arms down because it was doing something else plowing or something if you switched from one tractor to the other the lifting arms would jump to the position of the tractor you had just been using so that was no good but I think the encoders will be a little bit better another problem with the, those sliding pots was getting the plastic knobs to go on top of the sliders they, they uh, seem to be impossible to find so I would have had to change to a different type of sliding pot whereas the encoder just uses a normal uh, cap that you get on any sort of uh, potentiometer well any of the big potentiometers so that was pretty easy to get uh, I included holes here for infrared LEDs but I haven't got that working yet so can't 100% uh, say that that's going to be uh, perfect but uh, you can always just replace those with normal super bright LEDs and use them as a light if you're you know if you're using your models uh, in the dark you know I mean you put all these fancy LEDs onto the tractors sometimes it's fun to drive them around in the dark maybe it would be useful to have a torch built into the the controller so if you just put normal LEDs there you can do that it's no big deal uh, they're being driven by a transistor so you just have to spec the resistors correctly and the other thing uh, I use these pads for the resistors because it gives you the option to use true hole resistors or if you want to try your uh, skills with SMD soldering you can also fit uh, various types of or various sizes of SMD resistors then I have a little switch there you can use that maybe to change channels or something uh, I haven't wrote it into the code but it's there if you want to use it uh, then obviously the NRF24 module is the bigger version of the NRF so be that bigger module that goes there then a XB that'll go there on the other side is pretty much the same encoder a joystick more switches uh, switches for L LCD there or the TFT even there's the battery contacts some diodes to make sure you don't uh, do any damage if you connect the battery backwards uh, that should also prevent uh, you blowing up the um, blowing up the battery if you plugged in an AC to DC uh, power supply so if you plugged in the DC supply while the uh, batteries were still in it it shouldn't damage it uh, then just an on off switch down here out of the way hopefully won't be easily knocked on or off there's a couple of dedicated regulators on here so I'm not relying on the uh, pro minis power supplies here I have uh, 5 volt for um, the infrared and 3.3 uh, volt for the radios um, lots of capacitors around as well and uh, I, I'm using both LM uh, 117 regulators so they should be good for about 800 milliamps something like that so with any luck we won't have problems with the voltage dropping out which might have been a problem with the NRFs on the previous version but I think that problem was really in the software but just in case included the uh, regulators here the final package I have here is the little breakout board for the well it's not a breakout board so it's like a shield for the Arduino Pro Mini so hopefully this will make the um, assembly of the tractor is a bit faster for me so it basically just includes all the wiring for the the motor driver and a an NRF24 module, a small NRF24 module so basically what happens is this uh, board goes on top of the Arduino like this and then the radio module it goes in like that and then on top of all that will go the motor driver so probably something like there because the motor driver and the Arduino have the same uh, space in between the pins on the left and the right I had to move the pins for the uh, or the holes for the pins for the motor driver out uh, a little bit further so when I install the motor driver I'll just have to bend the header pins out a little bit to get them to line up with the row in my uh, kind of shield board so that's the
the idea there anyway hopefully that will work out like I said I'll assemble them in a different video okay so here we are zoomed in as close as I can get to the uh, the little shield board and you can see here these are the contacts for the NRF um, 24 radio module it's the the smaller NRF radio module I think it might be called SMD version on the on eBay but I can't really remember uh, I think it's a little bit more expensive but it's a very very small uh, radio I haven't tried that one before so hopefully that's gonna work out just as an example here is the one that I normally use so you can see it's a lot bigger actually nearly the size of the shield that I that I um, had made and here is the Pro Mini so gives you an idea of the size so the radio goes there the um, motor driver will go on top around about there somewhere and you can see that we need to well, I'll just off center this for a minute so the radio module lines up with these pins but they all also line up with the uh, Arduino so you have to just bend the pin out to fit into these lines on the outside but that's not a big deal I don't think uh, I do have one little chip here um, this PCF8574 uh, chip that is a little expansion um, a little expansion chip that uses the I to C on the Pro Mini so we get 8 extra outputs and I got that idea from a build on the RC Tractor Guy forum uh, it's a John Deere 9560R build by Tomek and he had uh, 4 N20 motors in his John Deere 6920 and he was just using this to expand the outputs of his Pro Mini so he could control everything that he wanted to so I decided to use that in my design here as well I ordered those chips quite a while ago and I didn't receive them yet so uh, hopefully they'll come soon but until those arrive I can't really put the board together to test it so okay so those are the PCBs that I just got PCBs for the new controller and for the little shield so in a video uh, coming very soon I'll assemble this controller and uh, it'll probably just be a video for the assembly so it'll be like a guide on how to assemble it and then I'll do another video testing it because uh, I don't have the code 100% finished yet so I'll have to do a bit of work on the code before I can really test out the controller so fingers crossed when I get this assembled it works well and uh, uh, some of you guys were asking for this uh, old controller my PCB which wasn't great but if this one works well the plan is to uh, run a Kickstarter for any of you guys who want it and uh, maybe if these boards work as well I'll include those on the Kickstarter thing so hopefully that'll get a good response I can get a bunch of these made and sent off to you guys I'll be uploading the code for the controller in a library form so you'll basically just download the Arduino library install it into your IDE and uh, just upload to the board and it should be exactly the same as my controller that I'm using um, even the labels will be the same so when you open up the menu say I, ha I have it split into different sections like farm construction haulage uh, RC helicopters infrared helicopters stuff like that so all those menus will be there for you and when you go into them you'll just see the list of my vehicles but you can go into the library and change all that yourself I've also included a couple of games in the code like uh, like snake and pong just the basic Arduino games that you can get for these TFT screens so I just included those in just as a just as a bit of fun so if you like the idea for the controller make sure and uh, hit the like button and share the video and all that stuff that help a lot and uh, if you have any comments or suggestions either below the video or over to the forum as usual but that's all I have for today I'll try and assemble the board or the controller as soon as I can and upload that video and that's everything so thanks very much for watching